Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I've had the honor of being president of the North American Menopause Society through 2017. And I am joined by one of our fellow members on the Board of Trustees, Dr. Howard Hodges, one of the most well-known cardiologists. Tell us who you are and what you do. Sure. Uh, my name's Howard Hodes, mm -hmm. uh, Professor of Medicine and Preventive Medicine, and I direct the Atherosclerosis Research Unit at the Keck School of Medicine in Los Angeles. So let's focus on atherosclerosis. Whole new class of medications that have now hit the market, PCSK9 inhibitors. We've got two different ones on the market in Canada and the United States. Let's start with who is a candidate for this medication? So first of all, we have to realize that these are brand new medications. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't fully understand their total efficacy or their total side effects. So with that said, um, on top of all that, they're quite expensive medications. In the U.S., they're about $14,000 a year, somewhere yeah. in that range. Um, but these are potentially a major breakthrough in new lipid-lowering medications. Uh, they work a little differently than do the statin medications, but they work in unison together. So together, we can get uh, remarkably lowering of cholesterol, mainly LDL cholesterol, or what we call the bad cholesterol. And these medications have uh, been shown in some studies to actually further events, cardiovascular events, further than do the statin medications alone. So the, the appropriate, the appropriate um, population of individuals that should receive these medications, uh, according to the FDA and what the literature says, are people with uh, pre-existing disease, cardiovascular disease, people who've had a heart attack or a stroke previously, and also people who have very high LDL cholesterols or individuals who may be intolerant to statins and other medications to lower cholesterol. So let's talk about women and heart health. For women, is there a particular difference in terms of their risk as they age and things that we should be thinking about in terms of targeting protection or looking at the use of these medications? Well, that's a, that's a great question. So, so in terms of cardiovascular disease, men and women are um, different. Mm -hmm. uh, women lag behind men somewhat, about 10 years in the time they actually develop cardiovascular disease and do men in general. And this is felt to be through the menopause, because of menopause, estrogen protection up to menopause and then loss, and loss of that protection with, with the loss of uh, estrogen. Um, so in terms of, of indications, um, more women are going to be are going to be put on these medications later in life than are men typically mm -hmm. um, maybe not always but typically because women ha have heart disease too and can and, and have other indications such as intolerance to statins um, but the goal is to lower the cholesterol in both men and women to try to reduce cardiovascular events and in terms of safety in both men and women always concerned is they're too low in LDL where we have to worry about things like dementia or any other issues that we worry about in concert with aging? Well that's a great question. So in one of the studies performed with uh, one of the PCSK9 inhibitors uh, neurocognitive effects were found as a side effect uh, mainly in memory and mm -hmm. amnesia. Um, so there was a difference wasn't specific to men or women, um, but it was across both both groups. And I don't believe they've published specific data by, by sex. But this was one of the side effects, as was muscle pain and, and eye conditions. Um, so these were some of the side effects found in one of the medications just recently. Um, now, these are rare events, but they were still a little higher in, in the PCSK9 group than they were in the placebo group. But again, these are all new studies and we need more data. We don't have enough data yet mm -hmm. to make inclusive statements. Um, so we do need to worry about side effects as we do with all medications. Uh, one of the side effects we worry about with statins, for example, is diabetes. And we learned about that in post-marketing right. and further studies. It took a lot of individuals to see that side effect, that, that being new onset diabetes. Mm -hmm. So it took a lot of treatment and a lot of people before that side effect or that, that adverse effect became known. So I suspect that'll happen with these medications also. They'll have to be in use for a very long time before we start understanding their long-term and, and some of their uh, very rare side effects. Because it would seem that for candidates who do go on these PCSK9 inhibitors, once you're on them, 
it continues to be an ongoing medication as the target rolls out to keep your LDL that low. Correct. Um, depending, on, depending on your condition, which is most people with LDL, high LDL cholesterol, these are lipid lowering medications are a lifetime commitment. You can't take them for a little bit and then go off them and, and have a low LDL. You have to stay on the medication to keep the LDL low. Is this an exciting addition for both men and women in, in terms of combating our number one killer? Well, as far as we know at this point, mm -hmm. okay. Um, you know, uh, it's still very controversial in women uh, who do, do not have pre-existing cardiovascular disease uh, that um, it's very still controversial that we, that we don't see a statistically significant reduction in cardiovascular events with LDL cholesterol lowering. It's lowered, but it's not statistically significant relative to a placebo group. It is for men, but not for women. And more importantly, it does not reduce overall or total mortality in women. And that ultimately is one of our goals, is to improve lifespan. And do we understand why there is this gender difference? Uh, that is not clear. But what is clear is mm -hmm. that hormones play a very important role. So we've learned over the years that obviously things like estrogen and estrogen plus progestin can actually reduce total uh, mortality in women. So there probably is a hormonal influence that mm -hmm. goes on. Uh, one, of the, one of the other theories is that the diabetes I talked about with statin use has been more predominantly seen in women than in men as a side effect of statins, yeah. and that effect may counterbalance the protective effect that you get through LDL lowering. Now, we don't know that for a fact, but it may be one of the mitigating factors and why we see a reduction, but it's not significant. I think what we know for a fact is you're going to have to come back next year and then update us into all this, we're not sure, but it's evolving. And, and you should know, too, there's a whole host of other class of medications that are out there and, and also being developed. We'll have to have you back next year. Great. Thank you for being here. Thanks so Thanks. much.